Tonight, we want to make demands on spiritual strength, or spiritual power, strength, and revival. Spiritual power, spiritual strength, and revival. Ephesians chapter 6 and in verse 10 he said finally my brethren be strong in the law and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We therefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Spiritual power and strength are necessary for the journey of Christianity and the journey of destiny. As it is in the physical, so it is in the spiritual. You have heard that it is the survival of the fittest. Especially in the jungle. As it is in the physical, so it is in the spiritual. The welfare of your spirit determines the welfare of your destiny. Nobody can be weak spiritually. They cannot afford to be weak spiritually. Why is spiritual power or spiritual strength necessary? Number one. The strength of your spirit determines the extent of your victory in the conflicts of life. The strength of your spirit determines the extent of your victory in the conflicts of life. Life is warfare, not form fair. I heard that from God's servant Bishop David Oedeko for the first time. Life is a battlefield, not a playground. For we wrestle, we wrestle, we wrestle. And the success or the victory in the battle is determined by your strength. He said, be strong in the Lord, for we wrestle. We are in a fight, so you can't afford to be weak. One translation said, we are fighting persons without bodies. There are people we encounter all the time. They are wearing suit and shoe physically, but they are different in the realm of the spirit. In the night, they are something else.
Be strong in the law because we are in a fight. The people you meet with in the office every day and the people who appear for the same interview with you, you don't know where they are coming from. Your spiritual strength, the, ex, the strength of your spirit determines the extent of your victory in the conflicts of life. Please note down the scripture, Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 all the way to verse 13. And in the book of Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10, it said, if you collapse in the day of battle, it is because your strength is small. So you need to be strong in the spirit. You need to be a strong man in the spirit. You need to be powerful in the spirit so that you are not flawed by the battles of life. You need to be strong in the spirit. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. So the extent, the strength of your spirit determines the extent of your victory. Maybe you are in a current battle now maybe there is an area of your life where there seems to be a fight the reason why maybe you have not overcome that fight is because your strength is not higher than the opposition when your strength becomes higher than the opposition the battle becomes cheap to win when your strength becomes higher than the strength of the opposition the battle becomes cheap to win so the strength of your spirit determines the extent of your victory in the conflicts of life. Number two, the strength of your spirit determines the extent of your exploits. Determines the extent of your exploits. Daniel 11:32 for the people that do for the people that do know their God they shall be strong and do exploits exploits belong to the strong the weak don't do exploits is the strong that do exploits you have to be strong in the spirit exploits refer to attention commanding results exploits are talking about generation impacting results they shall be strong and do exploits the weak cannot do exploits am I communicating at all the weak cannot do exploits the weak cannot do exploits it takes the strong to do exploits where we are sitting under now by his mercies under God is a generational attention commanding structure. You can't be weak hearted and die it. One day during the construction, we we're driving around here, and one of the young men that visited from another part of the country we were passing around. He says, Sir, you get her to. He said, Oh, God, you get hurt. I said, Why? He says, See what we are seeing. That statement he has made has been made not once, not twice, not thrice. Chickens don't do exploits. Weak-hearted people don't do exploits. Shaky people don't do exploits. The people that do know their God, they shall be strong. Exploits belong to the strong, to the aggressive, to the violent, to the audacious. So I am advertising to you tonight spiritual audacity to make demands on spiritual, on spiritual fervency and then you step into the realm of those kind of results that will command your generation's attention and exploit the devil and his kingdom. Anybody stepping into the realm of that exploit shout the loudest amen. amen. The strength of your spirit determines the extent of your exploits number three the strength of your spirit determines your speed and lift in life your speed and lift in life speed and lift those who run many times they want to check them whether they have 
they are on any form of anabolic steroids or anything that gives them extra strength ahead of their contemporaries they check their blood to be sure that they are not on anything am i communicating god speaking about the horse in scripture in job chapter 39 and in verse 19 job 39 and in verse 19 he said has thou given the horse strength has thou clothed his neck with thunder can you make him afraid as a grasshopper the glory of his nostrils is terrible he powered in the valley horse is used for race it's a race animal because the bible say god that located his strength with that strength it charges so everywhere there is strength there is speed when god laid his hands on elijah in first kings chapter 18 verse 46 Elijah became so strong until he ran faster than horses. Speed, 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 speed. It takes strength to overcome resistance. Whatever is resisting your progress, whatever is resisting your motion can be overcome by strength. When your strength increases, your speed increases. When your strength increases, you lift up high. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 19 said, The Lord will, will guard my feet with strength. The Lord is my strength and he will make my feet like hinds feet. And will make me to walk upon my high places. So when you have more spiritual strength, you begin to run faster than your contemporaries. You even run faster than some who started before you. Am I speaking to somebody at all? If your life is so slow currently, it's because your spiritual strength is small. But I prophesy to somebody today, that strength that is coming to make you to take charge and take the lead is coming upon you tonight. Shout the louder, amen. Lift your right and say, Father, I receive the strength for speed the speed of the overtaker i receive the strength for speed i receive it now shout the lord and say amen take your seat in the presence of the lord is is god speaking to somebody here at all so how many of us are convinced that you need spiritual strength it's a calamity to be a weakling in the realm of the spirit it's a calamity it's a tragedy to be weak spiritually to be weak weak spiritually is a it's a state of emergency it's a it's a calamitous existence and that is not that shall not be your portion in the name of jesus christ and so the strength of your spirit determines the extent of your victory in the conflicts of life it also determines the extent of your exploits then it determines your speed and your lift in life number four the strength of your spirit determines the extent of your possession and inheritance it determines the extent of your possession and inheritance it determines the extent to which you can take delivery of what is yours it determines the extent to which you can take what is yours and no devil can stop you to be weak is to be cheated out of your inheritance is to be cheated out of your inheritance to be weak is to be deprived of what is yours and you are helpless you can say nothing weak proverbs chapter 11 verse 16 says it says strong men a gracious woman retaineth honor and strong men retain riches they retain they retain riches joshua chapter 17 verse 14 i'll read all the way to verse 17 and the children of joseph speak to joshua saying why have you given us but one lot and one portion to inherit seeing i am a great people for as much as the lord has blessed me hitherto and Joshua answered them, if you are a great people, 
then get you up to the wood country and cut down for yourself there in the land of the of the perizzites and the, of the giants in the if mount ephraim be too narrow for you and the children of israel children of joseph said the hill is not enough for us and all the canaanites that dwell in the land of the valley have two chariots have chariots of iron both they who are of Bethshean and her towns and they who are of the valley of Jezreel and Joshua spake unto the house of Joseph even to Ephraim and to Manasseh saying you are a great people you have great power you have strength you shall not have one lot only but the wood shall be yours the mountain shall be thine for it is wood, it is a wood and you shall cut it down and the outgoings of it shall be thine for thou shalt drive out the Canaanites though they have iron chariots and though they be strong what is he talking about you are a, you, are, you have power you are not permitted to maintain one lot am I communicating how many of you know that when a, a, a child is too in the in the in those kind of schools that some of us went where they used to bully a lot if a child is too timid everybody looks for his trouble they will collect his thing and he can say nothing as it is in the physical so it is in the spirit one day you know how lions maintain take their territory one day I saw two, I, I saw on our channel Dunamis TV, the wildlife, and I, was, and I, and I saw a lion, a, a, a lone lion, just moving. I don't know what happened to him from where he came. And he just stepped into the, 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 the pride of another lion, the, the, the family of another lion with a male and some females and children. And he fought that male until he drove him out. And took possession of a new territory and I saw this old this other lion that they just dispossessed moving as if he broke his leg he was thoroughly wounded in that fight and he was going me and my wife were watching him pitying him hey, yeah where will he go now how will he survive We don't know where the other lion came from maybe a bigger one drove him from his own territory he came here and drove this one from his own territory that is how it is and as it is in the physical so it is in the spirit there are things belonging to you in the hand of the devil that you must take back this year that amen is too paralyzed there are things belonging to you that are in the hands of witches and wizards ancestral spirits occultic powers that you must take back this year if god is speaking you say loud amen you have labored so much to still be empty-handed you have given tithes and offerings and given everything for your life to still be empty and vacant like this i prophesy today by the reason of the strength and the power that will come upon you tonight what is yours in the hands of the devil shall be dispossessed from that hand and taken delivery of by you shall the loudest amen at somebody by yourself say you need strength to take what is yours take your seat you know you remember what the bible said in matthew chapter 11 verse 12 from the days of john the baptist till now the kingdom of heaven suffered violent and the gentle take it by force the violent the aggressive the audacious the strong the violent take it by force how violent you are how aggressive you are how audacious you are how strong you are determines what you are going to be able to take and somebody here tonight to receive that baptism that baptism of aggression and violence and baptism of wrestling and you will take what is yours shout the loudest amen shout the loudest amen shout amen at the top of your voice God showed us this location many 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 years ago and we tried everywhere and we tried we came and it looked like uh, they said oh there's nothing on the airport road there's no land nothing there nothing there 
We had gone towards Karsheria, got thousands, uh, maybe a thousand acres. We went towards Kefi Road, girl got maybe 700 acres or something. There about. And the Lord told me, he said, remember where I showed you. So what do we do? So go there, look for it. He said to me, one square inch in my plan is better than a thousand hectares anywhere else. Say yes, sir. So I got aggressive. I called one of our property agents. I think he should be in service tonight. I said, kneel down. This is your work. At so and so place on the airport road, go and look for mega land. I anointed him. I said, if it is my work, if I'm a property agent, I would have searched for it. But that is your work. For that purpose, you are anointed. Go and bring it. The violent take it. You don't, you don't sit down. You don't, you don't take it by begging. You don't take it by crying. You don't take it by sentiment. You take it by violence. You take it by force. Under one week, he was back. There, I found a place. There are hundreds of hectares. And they are ready to sell as much as we can buy. Wow. Let's go. <laughs> and the rest of it, they say, this is true. I impart upon you the same ruggedness tonight, resilience and strength of spirit, everything belonging to God that God wants you to take. Whatever you are meant to take for God or for yourself, I release the baptism of violence, the baptism of aggression. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. What about all the other lands? They will fulfill their purposes. All of them. None shall be wasted. But he says, remember this place first. That was where we came. Am I communicating? When it is time to pray, I like you to pray. Every, all the energy you possess. The requisite strength to dispossess the enemy of what is mine. Lord, I am asking for it. The spiritual energy, the resilience needed to take from the devil what is mine. I receive it. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. And by the time this has happened, this year, all the things that should have come to you in the last 10 years will arrive in the same year. And people will be surprised at what has happened to you. And the strength of your spirit determines the extent of your victory and the strength of your spirit determines the extent of your exploits and it determines your speed and lift in life and the strength of your spirit determines the extent of your possession and inheritance and finally the strength of your spirit determines the longevity of your relationship with God it determines the longevity of your relationship with God. This is a summary. How strong you are determines how long you stand in God. How strong you are determines how long you will stand in God. Ephesians 6 10 said be strong in the Lord and then verse 13 said having done all to stand how long how strong you are determines how long you can stand there are people who are so weak spiritually that their spiritual life does not exceed just a few months or a few a few a few days or a few a few years or something how long how strong you are determines how long you stand there are people we knew from the university days who saw the strength at that time and saw the fire at that time and today they say i am not disappointed that many decades after 
you are still on your feet and you are still on fire for God having done all to stand if you don't want to backslide today and front slide tomorrow you need strength in the spirit we live in a world that is filled with distractions filled with temptations filled with traps and filled with snares you need to be strong in the spirit in order to last in God to last on your feet am I communicating at all our people say that it is not good to know one person twice that is you knew him as a normal person then you are now knowing him as a madman but it is not good to, to, for some one person to be having two identities it's not good to know somebody that um, that is on fire today for god and the next day we saw him in the nightclub dancing his life away no no no. it's not good to know you as somebody who is evangelizing today and the next day you are you are in 419 no so so to, to be consistent in god you need spiritual strength so that whatever comes your way you may stagger a little but you just remain on your feet having done all to stand you stand am i communicating at all you stagger small but you are on your feet he didn't floor you to the ground he just shook you a bit but you remain on your feet i prophesy to somebody here the devil shall not give you a double identity the identity of a child of god and the identity of the child of the devil that one identity you have shall be that one identity shout the loudest amen take your seat did God speak to anybody tonight? Spiritual strength, spiritual power, very, very important. What is the way of strength? What is the way of power? What is the way of spiritual revival? Number one, waiting on the Lord. This is one of the ways, and this is what we are doing now, that can increase your spiritual strength, increase your spiritual power increase the revival climate upon your life they that wait on the lord isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 they shall renew their strength they shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles waiting on the lord like we are doing now and then beyond these you do what we call a consecrational fast as frequently as possible once or twice a week beyond now you are waiting on the lord not for money not for car not for wife not for husband but for spiritual strength and energy for spiritual power and fire waiting on the lord is key number one secret number one number two is the knowledge of god the knowledge of god the people that do know their god they shall be strong daniel 11 32 b part they shall be strong and they shall do exploits coming to the point where you just you just don't know about god but you know god you are not just going to church but you know god you have experience with god you have relationship with god you it's not your father's relationship you are depending on not your mother's relationship not even your pastor's relationship his relationship with god is okay to to cover you but you, you have you know god yourself the people that do know their god so every time you are saying lord show me yourself reveal yourself to me that I may know him and the power of his resurrection when you are doing like that you are building up strength you are building up strength the knowledge of God number three is the fullness of word fullness of word what dead people are strong people the fullness of word eating and feeding on the word of God on a consistent basis first John chapter 2 verse 14 john the beloved was speaking he said i have written to you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning i have written unto you young men because you are strong and the word of god abideth in you when you are loaded with word you can't be weak when you are loaded with word you can't be weak when you are loaded with word you can't be shaky am i communicating at all somebody comes to you and say I, I i i saw a dream where he saw the devil not you in a coffin you will be laughing <laughs> you say go and sleep if you love the person and the person has good intention towards you then you tell him it will not happen it is the devil you saw 
If it is somebody who doesn't like you, who said he came and saw such a thing, tell him this is the last time you will see such a thing about me. See it for yourself. <laughs> see it for yourself. If the coffin is good, see yourself inside. Not me. That is for somebody you know. He doesn't like you. Then how all of a sudden he begins to receive revelation for you. God does not operate like that. <laughs> I saw a man, one man who is, he criticizes everybody and everything. And one day he came and said he saw a vision of it. I said, calm down. You saw nothing. <laughs> oh my God. God will not bypass those who love you to show things to people who hate you. We'll show you use your wife to, to, to show you something or your brother or your somebody somebody who really who has your interest at heart am i communicating at all so so the fullness of word was that number two the fullness of word when you are loaded with word then it, because matthew 4 4 said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god from the word of god strength comes you live you are made strong by word that was number three number four is appearance in zion the way you came here now you came to renew strength we have come unto the lord we have come unto the lord we have come to jehovah we have come to renew your hands we have come unto the lord we have come unto the lord we have come to the father we have come Psalm 84 verse 7 says they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeared before the Lord. So tonight you are passing to a higher level of strength. And I'm going to be speaking extensively in this regard by Sunday service. Don't miss it for anything. You are passing by this appearance today. You are passing to a new level of strength. In Jesus' precious name. Finally, the life of joy and praise. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy is key to strength. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 18 to 19. He said, I will yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation the Lord God is my strength you see so where there is joy there must be strength where there is praise there must be strength everything that every in, every invitation to depression is an invitation to destruction is an invitation to weakness whatever depresses you deprives you of energy it deprives you of energy so you must make up your mind to consciously cultivate the joy of the lord be excited be joyful uh, if it doesn't happen on its own make it happen make it happen make it happen and it's a new day for you somebody here tonight strength is coming upon your life every battle that defeated you before this year the strength coming upon you will make you overcome that battle your life is going to produce unusual exploits i prophesy speed by strength in the name of jesus i prophesy your possession your inheritance your wealth and your resources by spiritual strength shall enter your hands in the name of jesus 
and I prophesy spiritual stability, 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 stability and longevity. You will not be up today and down tomorrow. Strength is released upon you in the name of Jesus and the grace to wait on the Lord, the grace to know the Lord, the grace to receive the fullness of the word and to be faithful in appearance in Zion and to maintain your joy and your praise. That grace is released upon you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands and let's appreciate him for his word to us tonight. Lift your hands and lift your voice. Appreciate him.